Welcome to Silverado Country Club. This is Sean Klotz. We're going to continue our series on golf swing and golf lessons, trying to improve your game. We've got another beautiful day here in December in Florida, so we're glad to have you guys. Today we're going to talk about uh, basically your divot, trying to make a divot with your irons uh, and how much divot you should make. It's a sign of a good player that, mo that every good player that I know of, you watch on tour, they all take divots. Some, some take longer, some take shorter, depending on their height and how tall they are, different uh, angles of attack. What we want to talk about today is just making a divot, making sure that you actually get through the ball and, and getting down to it. So um, the first thing I want to do is I've got this first one teed up here. And I practice, th so this ball is not teed up, this ball is teed up. I practice an awful lot off of the tee. I think it really helps you build your golf swing. You don't have to worry about getting the ball up off the ground. It makes you work more on swing than it does necessarily on trying to help it up off the ground. So I'm going to take the first shot here with the with my eight iron. And what I want you you'll see this after I get done here. Okay, so Dick, if you can kind of narrow it down a little bit too. What I want the viewer to see is how far that divot went after the ball, okay? The original ball was basically right in this position right here. We're almost three or four inches past that uh, teed up golf ball. The main point is that there's a direct correlation between the length of the divot and the, the low or the um, handicap of the person, okay? The longer the divot after the ball, my contention is the lower the handicap the player. If you go back the other way, think about some of the, you know, maybe, hopefully not your shots, but some of the people you see on the range, you'll see their divots behind the ball, and they actually come through impact, and they won't even have any type of divot after the ball. That's mainly because they're trying to help that ball up in the air. It's called flipping your hands, so as you get through impact, you take your club head, and it actually goes in front of your hands and flips. For me to execute the shot that I just did, I have to maintain a position of lagging the club behind the ball. I may, must make sure the club head stays behind my hands as I come through. We make impact in this position right here, and then the club still stays down as I follow through. So people call that kind of keeping your head down and head still. I'm good with that. I'm really more about making sure your body stays down through the swing. Let me do one more shot just so you kind of see the head position and kind of staying down through it, keeping that good lag. Gets me into a nice balanced position on my finish. And again, you can see the divots right where we want it to be, that long after the golf ball divot. If you need any more help with this, please let me know. But um, bottom line for today is let's just kind of keep working. Hit it off that tee. Make sure the tee comes up out of the ground. Hold your hands back as long as you can. Hold the club head back and let that club release at the bottom and keep swinging down through it until you get to a good finish position. Again, my name is Sean Klotz. If you guys want to come over for more lessons, please let me know. Happy holidays and thanks for watching.